Many of the car audio systems that I build and install feature a digital signal processor. This means when I'm tuning a DSP, I have to have a microphone set up inside, I have to have my computer connected to the device within the vehicle. That means all sorts of different wires and connections between the different testing devices in the vehicle and my computer outside. Another problem when tuning, I have to have all these different programs open on my laptop all at once on this one little screen. There had to be a better way in for the longest time, I've been wanting to build this, a tuning cart. What features were important for me on this cart? How did I make some modifications to the cart? And what all does this new tuning cart have? Hey, what's going on? I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. And without further ado, let's get into making ourselves a tuning cart. So let's begin with the foundation. Why did I start off with what is obviously a rolling tool cart toolbox? After all, they do make portable laptop stands that could have a laptop and even a second monitor. But part of the big reason that I wanted a little bit more space here is just so I had some working area to set some of the different tools that I might be using or if I need to make any wire connections or anything like that I have this little bit of extra space that I can wheel over right next to the vehicle the other reason is I wanted some real estate to add things like this to the tool cart this right here is a wire rack a lot of different wires with test probes and leads are often involved in the tuning process and I wanted something that I could simply hang my different probes on just like that so I'd have easy access to them when I need them throughout the tuning process. And then whenever I was done, I could just throw them into my drawer of the random wires here and I'll go into what's in these other drawers in a second. Something I haven't done yet that I want to account for and show you guys how we do here on video is I want to have a nice spot where I can put the power adapter for my laptop and anything else, kind of a random tray on the back side here. That way it's out of the way and off of my work surface. To do that, I'm gonna be using a couple of these wire baskets here. And I wanted to show you guys the proper way to mount something onto sheet metal. We don't want to just use those sheet metal screws because they have a tendency to kind of come loose over time. I want to show you guys a much better method that we can use on this sheet metal so that they'll last for a long, long time. The special tool I'll be using is this riv nut tool. What this allows us to do is we can take what appears to be a rivet, but this actually has threads on the inside. And these are great for sheet metal. If you guys have watched my install videos, I use them quite often for mounting amplifier racks and other things within a vehicle. The way these work is I'll first mark out the mounting hole locations for whatever I'm trying to mount. And then I'm going to drill a hole using this step drill up to the size that I need for the particular size of riv nut that I'm using. I will then apply the riv nut to the riv nut tool and I'm using a drill to actually apply this. What it does is it just sandwiches the riv nut onto the sheet metal. So with these applied, I'll be able to use a machine fastener and this has the threads now so I can mount each of these pieces. With these cable trays mounted, I now have a nice spot that I was able to secure my power strip here because my goal is to only have one wire running to an extension cord to plug in this whole system. And then obviously I can plug in my different testing devices here on the power strip. I can plug in my laptop. This is intentionally messy because I wanna be able to just set stuff here and just have it out of the way but I can just simply plug in the laptop and be good to go. The main goal here was to get as much wiring up off the ground as possible, which this achieves, and it keeps all the wiring out of the way so we have a nice clean work area on the front here. Now the next obvious thing you can see that I've added here to the tuning station is a nice monitor stand. This was easy enough to add. There's a lot of different options out there. I went with one that allows me to quickly adjust this up and down. It also has some cable management built in. It allows me to obviously turn the monitor as needed. And what I did here is just bundled up my connection for plugging into the laptop to send that video signal over. So it's just easy to grab as needed. The big time benefit of having the second screen here is obvious. This gives me more work area to work with on the PC. I can have two different programs fully displayed at once. This is going to be super handy when it comes to tuning. We've got the computer all set up. Now, what do I have down on the bottom here and what's in that case and what's in the drawers? Let's start with the drawers here. Ooh, we've got the JL Audio Max. We're gonna talk more about that in a second, but I do wanna take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, 
Crutchfield. I just got Crutchfield's holiday catalog and something I thought would be cool to highlight since we are talking about building a tuning cart is Crutchfield's Speaker Compare tool. Speaker Compare is a tool on the Crutchfield website that simulates the differences in sonic characteristics of different speakers. It's a pretty cool tool. They actually take into account what headphones you are listening through in order to accurately reproduce the recording from each of the speakers you're auditioning and I've actually found the results to be pretty accurate on the speakers that I'm familiar with. I'd encourage you guys to give it a try and see what you think. Don't forget that you can also get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans by using the link here on screen or down in the video description. Here in that first drawer, I do have some cutouts going on into the Kaizen foam. And the first cutout is for this guy here. This is the new JL Audio Max. So the JL Audio Max is a audio measurement system. Think an RTA on steroids. This thing has an absolute ton of functionality, far more than we can cover in this video about my tuning cart, but I'll give you guys the highlights. One of the coolest things is it has a five microphone array that allows for microphone averaging so we can get a really good result and measurement of our system. Max also integrates really well with JL Audio's latest version of their Tune software. This is Tune 4, which adds the new measurement tab. Again, there is a ton to go into here. If you guys would like to see me make a full video all about this stuff, let me know in a comment. I've got the Mac stored here along with some of the different power connections and then we'll keep that microphone tuning array down below. And then over here, I'm going to start making cutouts in my Kaizen foam to hold the audio control DMRTA. The DMRTA also comes with an extremely nice case here for all the different goodies inside. You've got the main brain device there. We've got our microphone, our RTA microphone, microphone cables, USB connections, all the different power adapters, and also different test probes ready to go so that we can quickly plug into the DMRTA and we can measure the electrical signal of our car audio system. So I still have some extra room for some additional cutouts here in the Kaizen foam, some extra storage for the future. And by the way, I like to use the Kaizen foam throughout my shop for all my different tool drawers because it keeps everything nice and organized. I have a full video about this that you guys can check out, but it goes beyond just having nice organization. It's also nice to know when something's missing. Right now, one of my razor blades is missing out of here. I know where it's at, but at the end of the day, when you're closing up everything and cleaning up, you can make sure that you didn't leave any tools inside the vehicle. So what's in these top two drawers? You guys saw this earlier. This is kind of my random catch-all drawer. And whenever you're using the Kaizen foam, I recommend recommend having a random drawer, if you will. Of course, you're gonna have random tools that are gonna kind of flow in and out of your workflow. So it's nice to have that random drawer that isn't all organized. And in my case here, it's perfect for just having all these wires here. Wires are a little bit more difficult to organize. I just have them bundled up with different pieces of this Velcro tape here. So when I do need to use them, I just undo that Velcro tape. And then like I showed you guys earlier, if we're in the middle of an install and we need to hang up some of our wires, just for quick access here, we have our wire rack. And then this drawer here on my tuning cart, this has all the SMD and DMOR tuning tools. So I have the DD1, which is for setting up your gains on your amplifier. The DD1 Plus, which gives us some more flexibility for setting up gain overlap. We've got the crossover calibrator, which is the CC1. And then I've also got some of the mobile solutions PT9As. So this is the original PT9A, and then I have a PT9A Plus. These are for measuring the polarity throughout a system at a speaker. So it's nice to have two because you can have one creating the signal and then you can have the other one measuring that signal. Also have the PT2, which is a little bit more of a handheld polarity tester. I have a spare audio control AC-BT24. This I can plug into the different DSPs and amplifiers and tune over Bluetooth. And then finally, this microphone here is nice for taking really quick RTA measurements without busting out a bunch of different gear. This is the SA-4140i SPL. We can take SPL measurements with this as well. This plugs into an iPhone or an iPad. So question of the episode, I wanna hear from you guys, the community, what else could I potentially add to this cart? I know you guys are full of great ideas. I'd love to hear them. Maybe there's something cool that I could add to the cart. I'm definitely looking forward to using this cart in the future videos when it comes to tuning. If you are looking to audition some speakers before your next car audio project, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield with their new speaker compare tool. You guys can learn more about that and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link here on screen or down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for tuning in and watching.